Okay, here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. By the way, when you're packing up for that vacation, don't forget a good supply of Horlicks tablets. They're going to come in mighty handy, both on the trip and when you get there. If you're motoring, for instance, and the family gets hungry, Horlicks tablets are just the thing for filling in. They'll keep the family happy and satisfied till you get to a place to eat. And appetites won't get spoiled. During the vacation, Horlicks tablets have scores of uses for golfing and fishing and tennis and hikes. Whatever you like to do, Horlicks tablets come in especially handy. They enable you to go longer without regular meals, let you stay longer out of doors. They'll give you greater energy, too, to do the things that you want to do. So by all means, slip a flask in your grip before you start. Your dealer keeps them in two flavors, natural and chocolate. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Professor Willoughby, who is imported by Squire Skimp to promote society in Pine Ridge, is certainly accomplishing what he set in to do. For the past few days, there has been one continuous round of parties. The latest social event is the coming out party scheduled for tonight to announce the debut of Geraldine Seastrunk. Lum and Abner, who are studying voice with Professor Willoughby, have been asked to sing a duet at the party tonight. Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Grandpappy Spears and Cedric Weehunt down at the Jotham Down store talking with Abner. Listen. Oh, yeah, that lum setting a style's all right. Pantsiest dresser I ever seen. Well, I don't believe I like him in that knee pants, though. That's just carrying things too far. He looks about seven foot tall without outfit on. Yeah. And he calls himself the Pine Ridge Playboy now. Oh, yeah, he just dove head foremost into this society business. He'll do anything Professor Willoughby tells him to. Man, I guess the professor knows society manners all right. Yeah, if you want my notions on it, he's just a ruin in the town. He'll have half the folks around here feuding with one another before the thing's over. The women folks is all giving these parties, trying to outdo one another. Sister Simpson and the widow Abernathy ain't even speaking to one another now. Because the professor said that the widow had the nicest party that's been given yet. Well, Paul's about ready to take out and quit it, I think. Caleb don't like it, huh? Oh, yes, and he likes it all right, but he, he says it's a ruin in his health. Well. He ain't got to bed for 9.30 for four nights straight now. No. And well, that's the trouble. We ain't used to it around here. Lots of fun, though. <laughs> I've had more fun this last week than I ever had in my life. Yeah, but folks can't get around all hours of the night this way and get any work done of a daytime. Elizabeth ain't been in the field for three days now. I know in reason the weeds are just taking that corn over there. That professor's wife told her that society women never worked in the field that way. Yeah, I know. She told Charity that the women folks aren't going to chop the wood, neither. Well, what does she think a woman's supposed to do around the house? Just sit? I don't know, but all the women folks in town trying to model themselves after I know that. Yeah, Elizabeth trying to get me to swap that hound of mine off her one of them peak knees dogs like that Miss Willoughby carries around in her arm. And I just hope they don't start smoking cigarettes and wearing them fancy evening dresses like she does. Well, there comes old Lum up out there. <laughs> yeah, still dressed up in his sport outfit. Wonder where he's taking old Lee. He's got him tied to the end of the rope there, leading him. More than likely swapping him off to somebody, I bet you. Well, he would if Professor Willoughby told him to. Sure, I'd give Mike not anything for some socks like Mr. Lum's got on there. I believe he was the prettiest one at the party last night. Yeah, but I wouldn't go through all that joshing that he's taking over them golf pants for nothing. Now. Howdy, Lum. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen. What about you taking old Lee? You ain't swapping him off, are you? Oh, no, no. Just taking him out for a little walk. Howdy, Grandpappy. Cedric. Howdy, Lum. What you taking lead up for a walk for, Mr. Lum? Oh, just exercising. Society folks always take their dogs out for a little walk this way, Professor Willoughby says. Professor Willoughby says, I swan I get so tired of hearing his name called, I can't hardly stand myself. That's all I hear over at the place, Elizabeth and Pearl. And Professor Willoughby said this, and Professor Willoughby said that. I wish they had never started taking them singing lessons off of them. That's all I wish. All that yelling and taking on over there now, the neighbors will think I turned out to be a wife beater. Well, more likely they're just running a scale. Do, re, mi, fo, so, la, ti, do. Oh, my goodness, Lord. Is that the same song you learned me? Are you taking singing lessons too, Cedric? Oh, yes, Mom. I took two already. Oh, well, I've had three lessons. 
You have? Well, I never even know what you're taking. Why, sure, I'm a taking. Well, I don't feel so bad about it, then. <laughs> I'd might not seem to admit that I was taking them. Why, you ought to be proud of it. Voice culture and all that stuff. Do, re, mi, fo, so, la, ti, do. You know, I don't believe you're hitting that do just right there. We you learnt me hits, uh, do, re, mi, fo, so, la, ti, do. Well, that ain't right now. Yeah. You're a little off on your do there, too, do not that? Yes, Mom, I believe, uh, I believe you start up to the top and come down, don't you? So ready for so lucky, do. Now, now, if you fellas want the practice, get out of here to do it. I hear enough of that over at the place without having to listen to it down here. It'll run the customers off. Well, that's what I come over here first to practice. Well, you can just find some other place. I mean, me and you, for that duet we're supposed to sing over at Geraldine Seastrunk's coming out party tonight. Oh, well, it ain't no use for me to practice on that, Mom. I don't know it. Yeah, we learned the words, but we need to practice on it some more. Now, what song was you aiming on singing, Mom? Why, the professor wants us to sing some kind of a grand opera song, but me and Abner picked out another, and we like it even better. Yeah. They cut down the old pine tree. Go ahead, Abner, lead out. Let's show them how it goes. Well, I don't want to sing too much. I don't want to strain my voice for tonight. Let's see how it does that go. Oh, they cut it down the old pine tree. And they hold it way to the mill To make the coffee a pine For that sweetheart of mine When they cut down the old pine tree Well, she's not alone in her grave tonight For it's there my heart will always be So we drifted apart Till they cut down my heart When they cut down the old pine tree that's fine, fine. I know that song myself. Well, it's the beautiful thing I ever hear. It's just funny. Uh, you ought to have a tenor in there, though, Abner. Pick that off again. Let me try it then, with you. Is that what the professor got you singing, Tanner? Yeah, he said that's what I am. Go ahead and start it. Oh, they cut down the old pine tree, and they haul it away to the mill. To make a coffin and a pine for that sweetheart of mine When they cut down the old pine tree Where she's not alone in her grave I believe you got a little higher there, I'm not uh-huh. a high reacher Where she's not alone in her grave tonight For it's there my heart will always be So we drifted apart till they cut down my heart When they cut down the old pine tree I could be older a little on that. I believe I could sing that if I know the words to it. Oh, they cut down the old pine tree. Well, <laughs> yeah, Cedric, I never know you had such a good singing voice. Just two lessons is all it took. Yeah, for the last Yeah, Well, I might get you to sing a solo at my coming out party, Cedric. Yeah. I love you truly or something like that. Hey, you having a coming out party too, Ron? Yeah, yeah, he's studying about it. So. Yeah, he's going to make a debut. Uh, that's what they call it, squash yeah, I was talking to the professor about that, though, Abner. He said the men folks don't ever make a debut that way. Well, I don't see why they don't. Yeah. What is this coming out party here talking about anyway? I never heard of them before, debuts and all that stuff. Well, it's just a big party there when somebody gets up old enough to where they would get married if somebody asked them to. Get a right into some matrimonial bureau or putting an ad in a paper, something like that for a husband. Well, they make what they call a debut. They come out. Come out of what? Well, I don't know. Now, there's something I don't know a thing about, Grand. I wondered about that myself. Well, sir, I bound you that's the reason the sea trunks is having their party out in the yard tonight. So Geraldine will have some place to come out of. She can come out of the house into the yard. Well, there's reason. Why, sure. Now, I wouldn't pay no attention to what the professor says, Norm. If you want to have a coming out party and announce yourself open for propositions to get married, it's your own business. That's the way I look at it. Yes, sir. It would be a pretty good thing for me to give her that thing. I never had thought about that. Oh, <laughs> well, there comes Squire Kim. What? Yeah? yeah. Looking what he's doing coming over here. I don't know. He ain't been over here much lately since he started this silver mining business. Oh, Squire's been awful busy. Trying to see that all his friends get to buy some of the stock in the company, you know. He don't want nobody to be left out. No. Well, sure, I can't hardly wait till we start getting some of them dividends from that stock. Well, howdy, Squire. Yeah, hello, Squire. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. 
Sit down, Teddy. You don't have to stand up. That's just when women folks come in. Well, to me, and I've got something I know you'll all be interested in. I was just talking to Professor Willoughby, and he said that what we need in Pine Ridge is a country club. Country club? Yes, sir, a first-class country club. Oh, we don't need no country club, Squire. We're trying to improve ourselves. We're going to have a club. Let's have a city club. Oh, well, it'll be up to date, Rob. Uh, they have them in the city, you know. It's a select crowd. Uh, well, what it is, a golf club. You know what a golf club is, don't you, Rob? Oh, yeah, my. <laughs> I've seen a whole bag full of them. Looks sort of like a walking stick on a whole there. Uh, no, no, Rob. A golf course. A place where we can play golf. Well, now, there's something I'd like to learn to do. Yeah, me too, Abner. Yes, I've sat in my buggy there on the road to the county seat and watched them fellas out in them pastures play golf for the hour. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing I've ever seen. Get up there and hit that thing and then chase it and see if I can find it. I've always wanted to play it. Yeah, yeah. You just put me down for a member right now, Squire. So I'll join you. Yes, for me too. Yeah. Oh, yes, they'll all want to join it. That's the trouble. we got to keep it exclusive, though. Can't let just anybody in on it. See, I figured we could limit the citizens uh, to members to those that own a certain amount of stock in the Great Western Sterling Silver Company. Anybody that owns at least five shares of stock in the company would be eligible for membership in the country club. Of course, that'll mean that uh, all of you fellows will have to buy a few more shares of stock. Now, I've got some stock certificates right here in my pocket. We wonder if the idea is to learn to play golf or to sell more stock in the silver mine. Ladies and gentlemen, does the following sound familiar to you? It's an actual conversation that took place in a store a month ago. Listen. Yes, sir? I want some Horlicks malted milk. Half pound size. Now, what flavor, sir? Oh, natural like this. All right, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, have you ever tried our own brand? It's a lot cheaper. Yeah? Well, I think I'll take the Horlicks. All right, if you say so. But our brand is every bit as good, I assume. You're just paying for the Horlick name. Maybe. But I've heard so many people say that you can't beat Horlicks. They say it's got every other kind beaten a mile. Well, and what's more, my wife said to be sure and get a Horlicks. So that's what I'd better get. And a wise choice, ladies and gentlemen. The man didn't know it, but that particular imitation of Horlicks offered him was a decidedly inferior product, not worthy of the name malted milk. Just a mixture of ordinary sugar, inferior malt powder, and skim milk. If you run up against a similar situation, insist on getting the rich, full cream milk. The choice selected wheat and fine malted barley of Horlicks, the original and genuine malted milk. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.